Hi, this is Jay Smith. I'm speaking to you here in London inside my car. And I'm asking you to tune into a debate that's going to happen tomorrow. Well, actually, tomorrow evening, American time, but it's going to be uh, early Thursday morning, about 1.30 in the morning, UK time. It'll be a debate between myself and Anjum Chowdhury, Sheikh Anjum Chowdhury, who has been uh, in our news quite a bit lately. He is the one who is that radical preacher that's had so much influence on Muslims heading out over to join ISIS in Syria, uh, has caused a huge furore here in our own country. And he is probably the most radical Muslim we have in Britain today. Now, the debate that we're going to do tomorrow looks at the authority for everything he believes. We're going to confront the Quran, and we're going to confront the Prophet Muhammad. But we're not going to confront it using the traditional method. We're not going to look at the traditional stories. We're going to confront it using historical criticism. I don't think that Anjan Chaudhary's ever faced this kind of debate. I don't recall that he's ever had a debate on this subject of this tenure. So this will be interesting for you to watch because people like Anjum Chaudhary, who has had such an influence here in this country, are absolutely dependent on Muhammad as a prophet and on the Quran, his revelation, for everything they say and do. That's the foundation for all they believe. We're going to confront those beliefs using the most neutral material possible historical criticism and destroy who this man was, and the book that he received. Now, it's going to be exciting, it's going to be different, it's going to be new. Please do tune in. We will. We know it's early in the morning, Thursday morning, 1.30, so we're going to put it up on YouTube as well, and we'll send out a press release where you can watch it on YouTube uh, so that you can also enjoy this new material. Okay, do tune in. We'd love to see you there. This is Jay then, here in London, over and out. David Cameron has set out his plans to introduce greater powers to tackle extremism, saying that Britain has been a passively tolerant society for too long. The Prime Minister says a new counter-extremism bill will be in the Queen's speech later this month. The measures include banning orders against individuals and groups that promote extremist views which undermine British values. Tonight we have a special report on the man many believe prompted the government's action. Here's our security correspondent Gordon Carrera. In a quiet town in rural Norway, a mother shows me round the park where she once took her son. Less than two months ago, Toril Alexander received a phone call informing her that her son Tom had been killed fighting for the group calling itself Islamic State. She prefers not to show her face. How has his death affected you? When I got that message that he was dead, I, the blood just froze to ice. My boy from little, this little town should go to Syria and, um, and become uh, be dead there. The fate of Tom Alexander, seen here as a boy, is blamed by his mother on the group he became involved with after converting to Islam. Who do you think was responsible for him going out to Syria? I think, uh, personally, Prophet Ummah have a big responsibility. Here is Tom Alexander out on the streets with that group, Prophet Ummah, in one of their own videos. One person involved with those who set up the group told us that when it was first established, Prophet Ummah was disorganised and ineffective. That was, he says, until it was paid a visit by Anjem Chowdhury, pictured here in Norway. He says Chowdhury had a huge impact. In Oslo, the group spokesperson even told me he'd recently been to Britain. I was there uh, last year uh, and I met, uh, met uh, Anjam Chaudhry, Abu Bara, Abu Wala and the other brothers. Just to see what they were doing, learn from them, get advice? Yeah, of course, just learn, to learn from them and get advice and work with them. Nearly every individual who's gone from here in Norway to Iraq and Syria has been linked to the group Prophets Ummah which in turn has been supported by Anjem Chowdhury. And it's not just Norway. Research seen by the BBC reveals that a third of those who've gone from Western Europe are connected in some way to Chowdhury. The research carried out by the Western Jihadism Project at America's Brandeis University is backed up by Chowdhury's travels, for instance to Belgium. I come from England in order to radicalise the youth in this country. Dozens from a group here linked to Chowdhury have been prosecuted. 
We are here in the heart of Europe in Amsterdam. Here he is in Holland, where he's had contact with another group. And he's seen here in Denmark. I know many of you have friends who are Muslim. Here in Britain, Chowdhury is on bail but has not been charged. He is perhaps, though, the person the government had in mind when today it announced new measures to combat extremism. In London, Chowdhury told me that while he had links to 40 groups in different countries, they were not run by him and he did not send people to fight. I don't think that there's one example of anyone in Iraq or Afghanistan or Syria or any place in the world, whether passed away or whether alive today, who's actually said that I'm here because Mr Chowdhury asked me to go abroad or I was incited or encouraged by him to go abroad. Norway's experience shows that Anjem Chowdhury's influence may extend far and wide across Europe and many countries are trying to work out how to deal with it. Gordon Carrera, BBC News, Oslo. Our home editor Mark Eastland is here and we've seen there the influence that Chowdhury has had and it just goes to show how difficult tackling extremism is going to be. Well, I think that's right. Against a background of hundreds of British Muslims heading off to Syria and Iraq to fight, and with people like Anjem Chowdhury, whose rhetoric is encouraging them to go, the government is convinced that action needs to be taken. Uh, the proposal is for a new sort of ASBO-type banning order against groups or individuals who are deemed to be extremist. So what is extremism? Well, the, the government's definition is this, vocal or active opposition to fundamental British values, including democracy, the rule of law, individual liberty, mutual respect and tolerance of different faiths and beliefs. But this is where it really starts to get difficult. As you say, it's one thing to ban someone for inciting hatred or violence, but quite another to pass a law that silences anyone who challenges established values. I was in Parliament Square today, a statue of Gandhi looking down at me, uh, who was jailed for being extremist. Mandela, jailed for being an extremist. History tells us that extreme views are sometimes needed to challenge the very established values that people at the time hold so dear. Mark, thank you.